The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Jobs Friday and quite a number. You catch a print this morning, folks, and you're talking about a print of 528,000 jobs added in July. The estimate was for about 250,000 jobs. We have an unemployment rate back to 3.5 percent. Labor participation rate is down, but you're talking about 500,000 plus jobs added. You're, you're talking about an unemployment rate at 3.5 percent. You're talking about that we are now back above employment levels coming into COVID. Granted, we're talking about two and a half years ago, so there should have been jobs created coming into COVID over the last two and a half years if you were on the same trajectory. Nonetheless, we've gained them all back and we lost tens of millions of jobs, folks. Pretty remarkable, the cycle that we've gone in the last two and a half years, the economy still chugging along. Boy, I know we got two quarters of declining recession, but I think we're all getting a lesson as to why that statistic may not be indicative of a recession. Whatever's going on, there are various factors across the board in this economy. But when you're adding half a million jobs every single month and you have an unemployment rate at 3.5%, very difficult to call that a roaring recession as we come into inflationary numbers next week for CPI and you get the markets reacting. The Fed said it, folks, and I've been talking about it. All Chairman Powell said last week was we're going to listen to the data. The data has been horrible when it comes to forcing the Fed's hands to hike rates. This morning lines up with that as well. Pretty remarkable that I say the data has been horrible. That data has been horrible if you're hoping the Fed doesn't need to hike rates, okay? Data's been great if you're talking about the economy, man. 500,000 plus jobs, 3.5% unemployment, uh, declining workforce. We'll get into that in a moment. That one probably not healthy. Nonetheless, it's forcing the hand of inflation, right? You have labor participation rate down. You have 500,000 plus jobs being added. Wages are gonna play into the role of inflation when you are fighting for human capital as many companies are right now in a big way. All right, let's jump over to, well, we'll kick it off with the markets. S&P's down 40 points right now. You're trading at 41.12. We were as high as about 41.60 overnight. Yesterday, early, you were at 41.73. We come into that number right at about 41.60, and you drop 50 points just like that. NASDAQ 100, you're off 1.35%, 13,144. You got the Dow off 6 tenths percent, and the Russell off just more than 1%. Crude hanging comfortably at about $88. That's gonna have some deflationary pressures. Crude, 88.33, down from 96 bucks, just about 48 hours ago, man, that crude market. Gold gives back some of the gains we've had, man. Gold up to 18.12 yesterday, you're back to 17.83. We get action all over the place. How about the moves in notes and bonds right now, folks? You are talking about a 10-year of 2.81%. We're right back, man, that's the 30-year. We're down two full points right now in the third year at 141, and you're down over a point right now to 119.08. We're pushing right back to where we were in terms of pushing 2.8% right now, 2.81 to be exact, the yield on the 10-year. Uh, we're talking about higher rates coming at you, folks, with the S&Ps down about 43 points coming into the opening bell. We jump over to the volatility index this morning. There's a little spike for you, up to 22.51 on that VIX. We come into that number at a pretty relatively reasonable 21.50. I mean, for all things considered, folks, look at this VIX action. All right, just zooming on this calendar year, there's December 31st. We get a spike to about 39 in January. Get a spike to 38 in February. Back up to that area in March. You subside for the better part of March and April. Back to 36 in May. Back to 35 in June. Right? July, we don't hit any big numbers. July, one of the only months, actually. You make it through the entire month. Right? Because early March, we had a big number in there. Late April, you were already up to 34. March, April, May, June. No July spike. And we come into a number that basically says 75 points is coming at you, folks. Now, we get CPI next week. That's going to be a big number, probably 
even more important than it was coming into this number. Now that all the expectations are going to be, hey, man, the Fed said they're data dependent. We got an unemployment rate of 3.5%. We have an economy adding 500,000 jobs. And the last CPI print, folks, was 9.1%. Now, here's what's going to happen. We're going to get the CPI print next week. We're going to get that print for July, okay? July, when you look at energy prices as well, yes, okay, those numbers have come down. But again, this is delayed data, okay? We're getting numbers for July. It's already August 5th. Now, July, you kicked off July, at about $110 crude, and it's been a slow side, slide the whole entire month, okay? So you're not gonna see as big of an impact as we're seeing right now with crude under $88 in terms of the, the impact it may have. Uh, you are gonna see an impact, but what's the core number gonna be? Because the Fed focusing on core as well, you take out food and energy, more volatile, as they've said, the core number, especially the energy side, okay, because the Fed's not going to be able to control oil completely, but they're getting a little bit of help right now with crude under $88. Uh, but we get CPI next week, man, and you better watch out for that number because this market's going to be jittery at 4100 man. I mean, all of this optimism, folks, okay? Let's pot tie it back to last week, all right? I got to go back 10 days. We're going to take a 20-day, okay? We go back, uh, let's see, where do we kick things off? That's this week. Yep, and here is the beginning of last week, essentially. We came into the big week of tech earnings. We came into a Federal Reserve meeting at about 39.76. The earnings went just about as well as they could have. The Fed meeting went just about as well as it could have as well. But when you think about where we could have been on that market, uh, sorry, I got a little distracted there. Uh, we are still 100 points above where we were at coming into that Fed meeting, folks. And if the Fed had said, hey, I think we're going to get 500,000 jobs added for next month. If the Fed said, hey, I think we're going to have 3.5 percent unemployment. If the Fed said and we're going to hike 75 basis points, I think the market would be in a lot different place. And I don't think it would be sitting at 4100 right now. As the markets continue to slide, it may be a dicey open, folks. I mean, that's where I put in some context here. OK. There's your Fed action, folks, okay? There is the Fed pop that we got from 39.74.5 last Wednesday. All you have to do is trade back to where we were there, and you're talking about 125 points from where we're at right now. S&Ps can give up 125 points from where we're at right now, and you're sitting just shy of 4,000 coming in to a 4,000 price point. Meanwhile, going into that number, right, the market had no idea what we were talking about in terms of talking about the jobs number. If you ever told the market you were going to get 500,000 jobs added and you were going to have 3.5% unemployment and you were going to have the Fed has to be continuing to up rates, I don't think the market will be sitting at 4,100. OK, CPI going to be a very important one, uh, but you can't deny these numbers, folks. 500,000 plus jobs added and we're talking about 3.5% unemployment. That's not what the Fed wants to hear, folks. And so if they get a high print on the inflation, watch out in a big way. Uh, it'd be pretty remarkable if the conversation started shifting again to a full percentage point hike, right? Don't count it out, man. If you're not pricing in the probability that that is at least a probability above zero, folks, it's a probability above zero, all right? 75 seems like it's baked in, everyone's saying right now. Well, 75 is baked in, and we don't have a Fed meeting for almost two months. You better believe a points in, 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 in play, folks. Stay tuned. I'll be right back, folks. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now, negative by 44 points. We get the NASDAQ 100, negative by 201. I was a little distracted there. Uh, unfortunately, we have COVID in the house yet again. Uh, so we got uh, our five-year-old catching COVID, looks like. Tested positive last night. So, of course, we got Tommy here as well. Unfortunate working from home. Uh, we got the five-year-old. He's watching his cartoons in his bedroom. We got Tommy watching a few cartoons as well. But I may have to jump around, folks. Uh, Tommy turning uh, a year and a half year and a half three days ago can you believe that remember that folks a year and a half just like that uh hopefully everybody all right uh we had covid last february right around his first birthday the five-year-old actually the only one that did not test positive he's doing okay he's just got some sniffles some coughs uh but nonetheless in school season just starting right now so you can see the impact that it still has i'm very fortunate to be at home right now uh working from home the kids old enough that they might be able to watch a cartoon for about 30 minutes maybe 60. <clears throat> i got a live stream of the bedroom going up right now just keeping tabs of them a little multitasking to say the least uh, but you see the impact because if i was not fortunate to have that ability right uh it would throw a hamper in the jobs that that i'm performing etc and you see that hitting people across the board uh, my dad's dealing with it right now in real estate he's got people out talking about contractors he was talking about he's got to find somebody else to hire just because of the normal cycle of people being out being sick um getting kicked out for a couple of weeks our man larry pesavento same deal now larry he expects to be back on monday folks we expect to have him back on monday he's feeling better every day just a slow road and on monday we got a little bit of a time change going on so larry and steve they're going to be swapping slots starting monday so steve rhodes will be doing the trader's edge live every day at 11 a.m larry pesavento beginning on monday he'll be doing his program 
Trade What You See live at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time every day. I'll kick it off at 9. Our man Basil at 10. We'll have Steve Rhodes at 11. We'll have Fast Market at 12. Larry at 1. Dave White at 2. Tom O'Brien, my dad, live from 3 till 4. So Steve and Larry switching it up. They start on Monday. Uh, should be an interesting one. And we go from there. Okay, jumping back into that jobs number real quick. Some of the action we're talking about. I mean, this is going to be your mainstream take. And I don't know how you disagree with it, folks. For the Fed. It doesn't even matter who's saying this. It's going to be the mainstream take. This is Eric Thera, Theret, maybe? Global macro strategist at Manulife Investment Management for the Fed. This report confirms the need to continue tightening and also endorses much of this week's Fed speak that sought to jawbone rate expectations for markets. The report may, chose, may pose a challenge for rate-sensitive equities like tech, which recently had been leading in terms of sector performance. That's putting it lightly, man. Uh, now, you get into some of the other data in here, just some data points they're talking about. This is a live stream from, from Bloomberg here. Uh, there were a couple data points. What did I just have here? Here we go. Labor for, force participate. Labor force participation rate. This one's going to get a lot of attention. Lower than anticipated, 62.1% in July from June's 62.2%. So labor participation rate actually going down when we have unemployment at 3.5% and you have wages rising and you have inflation rising. Will add to concerns about the tight U.S. market and the climbing costs of finding and keeping workers. I remember one of our... One of the comments that somebody had made a while back talking about JetBlue and Spirit uh, and the whole acquisition going on there, trying to buy Spirit and Frontier, is that part of the reason that, that Spirit is so attractive right now is that you buy an entire workforce of people. Imagine that. That's part of the attractiveness of growing, of, of buying a business is buying all their workers and getting them. It's a real deal going on right now in this market, though. All right. So we have jobs. That's going to be the, the big theme, of course, for the session. Uh, but let's jump around to some of the equities going on this morning. Expedia, they're out with their numbers. Travel, up 5.4% in the pre-market. We'll see how they're doing, though, after these jobs numbers, man. They beat on the top and bottom line in the latest quarter. Travel demand strong. Lodging revenue up 57% from a year ago. A year ago is a different time, man. Airline ticket revenue up 22%. Gas prices flying. You better be getting more money uh, in terms of that. And you spike to 112. We give back some of that, of course, with the market reaction with the S&P down 23 points. Also had Square out with their numbers last night. Disappointing. From about 90 bucks, you're down to 83. Uh, Square up there? Yes, they are. Better than expected quarterly results, uh, but the 34% drop in revenue in its cash app unit. Looks like that might be freaking things out a bit. Lyft, they're up after Uber had rallied earlier last week. Was it last week or this week? No, it was this week. Time is flying. Yeah, Uber had their numbers Tuesday. Quite an acceleration. I mean, look at the move, man. Even Tuesday, they finished at 29 bucks. You finished yesterday up almost another 10% to 32. You're giving back some of that today. But Lyft had their numbers, strong numbers from Lyft as well. Now, look at Lyft. Lyft came into the Uber earnings at 14, right? Came into their own earnings at about 17, and still they're trading higher, up about a dollar for Lyft. Unexpected quarterly profit. That'll do it, folks. Ridership rise to the highest level since before the pandemic, helped by cost controls as well. Interesting. All these these uh, gig economy. DoorDash, quite a, quite a spike, and they give it back. 10.3% they were up. Raise the forecast for gross order value, a key metric. Wider than expected quarterly loss, but revenue above Wall Street forecasts. Uh, I bet it's all gross order value because, well, it's not. Okay, It should be in the long run for a company like DoorDash because I imagine they'll figure out how to make money if they're pushing that out to the public. But they're dealing with uh, some margins in a big way, man, when you talk about ride delivery and, and the fees. And you may see some pressure on those fees, man, as people have to save each time when, when prices are rising across the board. I'm making changes myself in my own life, man. I was using Instacart a lot, using Instacart less so now because the fees are just too much, man, on some of those grocery orders. You add 10% to the order, then you have a fee, then you add a tip, right? And the tip, you got to tip the people delivering, man. And the tip gets added on the higher number that's a base. So it's a tough one in a big way. DraftKings, they report better than expected revenue and adjusted earnings. Raise full year revenue. DraftKings, now they were up earlier this week catching a bid 
from Massachusetts passing legalization for online gambling. Uh, DraftKings up about a dollar, dollar fifty, maybe even even with a weak market right now on their numbers, raising the full year forecast. AMC, it's going to issue a stock dividend to all common stock shareholders in the form of preferred shares, wider than expected quarterly loss. There's the one to pay attention to. Don't get caught up in the meme stocks, folks, thinking it's a long-term value play. Who's calling me? Uh, taking a look at EMC, AMC on a daily. We're back to about 17 bucks right now. If you remember, folks, people are saying, where does this thing really belong? This thing probably belongs at about five or 10 bucks, right? Up to 72, back to 18, quite a roller coaster. Uh, you're going to open down about a buck 60 on that equity as well. There's your action on AMC. Yeah, I mean, some of those meme stocks, right? GME, GameStop, down about a little bit of a dollar. All the rage right now. AMT Holdings up to 2,500. You're still at 850. I mean, you know, you think this thing's pulled back, folks? Do they even cover this thing? I think you're talking about a market cap like a hundred billion dollars still. Something that is just uh, not reasonable, to put it lightly. What else we got? Warner Brothers Discovery. Yeah. So, quarterly loss and revenue that came in below forecast. Now they've been in the press recently because they've been slashing movies all over the place, man. Yeah. 1765 down to 1460. They missed in pretty epic proportion right now. Um, probably a reason why they're cutting costs dramatically. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that when we get back. We got the opening bell, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, diverse partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. 
For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we've got markets open, and you're looking at an S&P down about 41 points right now. NASDAQ 100 down about 192. That's a slide of 1.5%. Dow up 223. Let's jump around some of the fag stocks out there. We'll kick it off with Apple. Quite a week for Apple. On Wednesday alone, folks, I was talking about Apple gained about $100 billion in market cap. They have about 16 billion shares outstanding. Every dollar they add, you're talking $16 billion. They added almost $7 to the share price alone on Wednesday and just this morning you're down two dollars from where we were let alone the slide you had yesterday on Apple Apple's held up relatively well very well compared to most of the market uh, we'll see how it holds up right now Microsoft shares giving back about one percent look at Microsoft catch a bit on the open though this market definitely doesn't fall off a cliff within the first minute of trading which it could have on some of those numbers folks uh, you almost can't overstate how strong those economic numbers are for an economy that's supposed to be calming down to help tame inflation. Not exactly what's happening, man, in a big way. Amazon shares down 1.1%. They've had a recent run. Uh, look at these stocks catching a bit on the open, though, right now. We'll jump over to Google shares. Whoops, G-O-O-G. Google down about 1.25. Let's jump over to ARC. Yeah, I expected that to be fairly volatile. They've had quite a run recently. Down about 3.6% for ARP. Some of their biggest holdings. Zoom down about 2.8%. Roku shares down 2.8%. She's got some DraftKings as well, up 8.5% in there. Um, and what were we just talking about? Warner Brothers Discovery, they continue to drop down 16.7%. Man, that one in big trouble in a big way. Let's see how some of the other companies that have their numbers are opening. DoorDash, I mean, strong numbers, man, but you're only up 4%. Market's getting clobbered, I guess. So that would play into things. But DoorDash up about 4% on their numbers to 83.82 this morning. Uh, and what else are we going to jump around to? Let's see. What do we got pulled up here? So talking about some of the jobs numbers, breaking into some of the numbers that I was looking at as well. Wage growth surged higher. Not going to help inflation, folks. Average hourly earnings, it helps consumers, though. You know, it's a double-edged sword in, in every single data point we have right now. Of course we want wage growth because wages have not kept up with inflation. But if you get wage growth right now, that's not going to calm inflation, okay? Wage growth surged higher, average hourly earnings jumping 0.5% for the month and 5.2% from the same time a year ago. Now remember, 5.2% from a year ago, wages are growing, man. But the last CPI print we got was 9.2%, I believe. Those numbers add fuel to the inflation picture that is already has consumer prices rising at the fastest pace since the 90s. Uh, the market was only looking for 0.3% monthly wage gain. Those wages, man. Leisure and hospitality led the way in job gains, 96,000. Professional and business services, 89,000. Healthcare, 70,000. Government payrolls, 57. Goods producing industries uh, with construction up 32,000. Manufacturing adding 30. Yeah, the best number since February and well ahead of the 388,000 average over the last four months. I mean, just crazy. Who was thinking 528, man? The number was 250. Maybe you come in at 350. Maybe you come in at 450. Maybe you come in at 200. No, we come in at 500,000 plus. We got 3.5% unemployment. I'm kind of harping on it, folks, because listen to the numbers. All right, the Fed said they're going to listen to the numbers. Are you listening to the numbers? I'm not even sure this market is listening to the numbers yet, sitting at 4120 in the S&Ps, folks. We're just back to where we were on Wednesday, right? I mean, it seems like on Wednesday, when the market was at 4120, if you said in 48 hours, we're gonna get these types of numbers, and you said, will we be higher or will we be lower? I don't think many would say, well, we're gonna be right where we are right now, sitting at 4120. There's almost no pullback in this market. In the context of where we've been, where we've come from, taking a look at the S&Ps, we're sitting right at a 50% of the run that we had. Now, that's not the full run. That's the acceleration we had from basically the March 29th highs, beginning of April, when you had the S&P sitting at about 4,600, okay? We're sitting at the 50% line. We're right bumping up to the area, folks, that we were trading at. When you're talking about late May, early June, that's going to be an area of resistance, the 50% line. Uh, we'll see where we go from there. Now, the NASDAQ 100... You take it off the full acceleration, first of the year, we're bumping up against the 382 line. 
Also an area you had a little bit of consolidation back in early May. Also an area you had a little bit of a consolidation, an area of support in the middle of March that could turn into potentially an area of resistance. Uh, we're going to find out, man. But nonetheless, you got the NASDAQ 100 up 2,000 points from the lows of just the middle of June. And really no pullback. Are we going to go green, folks? Are we going to go green? Why not? Let's go green on the day that we find out the data that's going to force the Fed's hand to go 75 basis points, if not a full point. You're going to hear the conversation of a full point. Now, we get CPI next week, okay? You're not going to hear it emphatically until we get that number, if it agrees with it, okay? But you better believe that the Fed should be thinking about hiking interest rates a full point if we continue to add 500,000 jobs a month, folks, and we got unemployment at 3.5%, and we have inflation at 98 one percent, right? I expect inflation is going to come down from that number. We have some real help on that number because we're talking about inflation. Kevin Hinks has talked about it many times. You got to look at where everything was the last time we got CPI. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, look at the June numbers, folks, of where we were. June kicks off with crude at 117 and the month ends with crude at about 111. That's the last CPI number we got. Look at what crude's done since July 1st, straight down. Yeah, we have some crazy bounces, man. But you're talking about lower lows and lower highs. So the energy part of the CPI is going down. Okay, it is happening. And it's probably going to continue to happen through August if we get this drop as well. Okay, so we're not going to see as big of a headline number. I wonder what's going to happen to the core number, though. Watch that core number, man. Because these energy prices, the way they've been moving... They're going to distort the top line number, which is why many have been talking about, is the Fed going to focus on the core number? And they just might. Okay, they just might. Because they're not going to take credit for crude dropping to $87 just because they hiked rates by 75 basis points. Okay, that's not the impact they're having when you have jobs getting added 500,000 and you got unemployment at 3.5%, man. 3.5%. We got them all back. All those jobs. Absolutely remarkable. All right, what else we got pulled up here in terms of data points? Let's see. What are we going to jump to? Ah, we'll keep Amazon in the press. Interesting here how they're going to go. Uh, Roomba vacuums, $1.7 billion. Animal, uh, animal. A Amazon will take that product, thank you. Uh, they're buying iRobot, which makes the Roomba vacuum. All cash deal, all cash. They don't want to give back any of the ability to reap the benefits to those iRobot shareholders. They're doing it in cash. Uh, and yeah, best known for the Roomba, $1.7 billion. They have more items than that. Uh, home cleaning robots like mops and lawnmowers. Man, Amazon folks, they're just taking over the globe. And I know I'm biased because I got a little Amazon in a retirement account. Amazon basically trading with the market down about eight tenths percent today. But you look at what this equity is doing, folks. I mean, they are taking over the robotics within the home. And this one just makes sense. Deep in Amazon's presence in consumer robotics, right? I mean, there's no reason why they're not going to have everything in your in your home, talking to you, moving, shaking, right? Your coffee maker is going to be talking to your fridge. That's going to be talking to your toast maker. It's going to be talking to your kitchen sink and your vacuum and your lights all at once. Um, yeah. Amazon made a bull bet on the space last year when it unveiled the Astro Home Robot, fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, they're going to have plenty of items coming out, I bet you. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right back. This coming Wednesday, August 10th, Basil Chapman will be hosting an all-day live webinar from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern Time, where he'll be presenting the technical tools based on the Chapman Wave methodology, a full in-depth course on his entire trading system. Over the five hours of live education, Basil will discuss studying and practicing entry and exit points, assessing where to add or subtract from positions, utilizing simple technical tools for holding positions longer, taking bear charts and adding notations, tools, and patterns, as well as identifying three core formations that repeat in every time frame and much more. When you sign up, you get a chart booklet emailed to you immediately to start studying and you gain access to his daily newsletter, The Opening Call, a $149 value. The cost to attend is only $295 and the full five hours will be archived. Don't miss this live special event Wednesday, August 10th with Basil Chapman. For all the details and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com right now.
The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps negative by 27 points right now. You're trading at 4125. All the markets catch a little bit of a lift on the open, but I imagine you're not done with the fireworks just yet, folks. Uh, we got quite a day in the markets. We're only 12 minutes into trading right now, and we got a man, Basil Chapman, coming up next. And as he would say, folks, the day is young. And if you heard the ad out there, folks, Basil, he has put together an outstanding webinar going on talking about his entire trading methodology. It's taking place this coming Wednesday, August 10th from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. The Chapman Wave methodology, technical tools based on Basil's Chapman Wave methodology explained live, a detailed all-day online course with live charts. He's going to be in there, folks, teaching you live for five hours his entire trading methodology, talking about notating charts, entry and exit points all right he's got the whole topics he'll be talking about here among many others and when you sign up you instantly gain access to the opening call his daily newsletter that's 149 dollars right away you also get an emailed booklet with chapman way of key techniques that you can go over starting immediately okay the cost to attend is only 295 dollars and you get $149 value in the newsletter itself, folks. So you're paying less than basically a one-month cost of Basil's newsletter to attend a five-hour trading session, uh, excuse me, not trading session, methodology, okay, training session in terms of Basil's entire methodology. And the one thing I'm going to pull up and show you, folks, is that when you sign up for Basil's webinar, you gain access to the opening call. And when you gain access to the opening call, what you gain, okay, are the open and call archived webinars. Now, Basil's got tons of webinars in here that you can gain access to by signing up for this webinar that he has taken place on next Wednesday. I'm just gonna scroll, folks. He's got a webinar he did a few months back in there on April of 2022, October last year, all right? He goes in dressing up the charts in the Chapman Wave, a methodology webinar there as well. He goes into the chart formations that worked on 2020 and how those apply technical tools that have produced strong gains in 2020, the dark new cloud news cover. You can go over all of these folks, okay? There's something to learn in each one of these webinars. You gain access to all of these the moment you sign up for Basil's webinar taking place next Wednesday. You get his opening call for a month, you get the email chart booklet, and you get, of course, 
Uh, his five-hour webinar taking place next Wednesday. That will be archived. You can watch it as many times as you like. And Basil, folks, he's not only a brilliant trader, he's a great educator, right? And what is so cool is that you got to kind of have both parts of it, all right? There's a lot of great traders out there, but I'm sure that maybe they just don't have the skill set to convey that knowledge in an appropriate and the best manner to their students to transfer as much knowledge as possible. And Basil is a great educator the way he walks through his presentations, folks. He takes your questions live during the presentation or afterwards. Uh, it's an outstanding webinar. I plan on checking it out for as much as I can for next Wednesday's action outside of maybe doing my program and taking care of a few things. But head on over to the front page. You can sign up for that, $295. And as I said, you get the opening call immediately. Uh, and you get, of course, access to those archive webinars along with Wednesday's webinar going on from Mr. Basil Chapman. And he will be up next, folks. And uh, as we said, the day, the day very young on a day like today, man. Uh, there's hot takes all over the place, folks, on a day like today. And boy, we're going to find out where we go, that's for sure. All right, let's jump around and see what else I had pulled up here. I talked about AMTD Holdings, all right? You talk about losing money. Uh, Let's see how they're trading right now before we jump into this thing, because the numbers are pretty staggering. Uh, excuse me, that's not it. I mean, they can you imagine being AMTD? Whew, they must not be happy with this, man, because the symbol is HKD, folks, and it is AMTD Holdings. Okay, so it's up 8.7% today. But this equity, how much did they lose? $150 billion plus, 163. They lost, okay, in the pink here, is market value lost since the peak, $163 billion. That alone is bigger than companies like Intel, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs. And that's not as big as how much those companies have lost. No, that's as big as the entire company, okay? That's, a, that's akin to every Intel shareholder over the last two days losing every penny they invested. To kind of put into context how much wealth has been created and lost in the span of a heartbeat on some of these meme stocks. Uh, it is basically a game of hot potato. I used to say for millions, now it's for billions, okay? And that's all it is, folks. This company, 25 million in revenue for the year ended April 2021. Yeah, a far cry from the companies they compare it to, uh, whether it's like Berkshire Hathaway, JP Morgan, et cetera, with market caps actually under where that company is trading at. Be careful in a big way of that one, folks. Now, pretty remarkable we got the market where it is when you look at what's going on right now. One of the things going on is tensions with China, man. They send warships near Taiwan. They cut off defense talks with the U.S. This has to do with Speaker of the House Pelosi visiting Taiwan, uh, highest ranking official to visit there in decades. Uh, I mean, pay attention to that, folks, okay? We've seen how geopolitical tensions can exceed the market expectations when it came to Russia. Russia and China are buddies, okay? Um, so don't be surprised if things ratchet up a little bit more beyond maybe the market thinks that is possible. As you have warships near Taiwan, last thing we ever want is some type of a missile or something escalating things over there. But this is how potentially that could play out when you got warships near Taiwan, man. Um, pro provocative military drills. Yeah, the most provocative in decades, and they cut off defense talks with the U.S. A relations between the world's biggest economies deteriorate. Yeah. Um, firing missiles over the island of 23 million. If you're living on that island, man, whew, tensions, whew, you better believe that they're playing a real role in what's going on there. Uh, market, not really pricing it in in any real dramatic way, though. All right, jumping down the line to some of the other equities with, with action this morning. Beyond Meat. Why do than expected loss, this company? Revenue missed estimates, just keeps going. Uh, they're gonna lay off 4% of their workforce. BYND is their symbol. Look at that thing, what's going on here? Looks like the market likes that they're gonna be cutting costs potentially. Uh, it was lower, they catch a little bit of a bid right out of the gate right now. Look at that thing, remarkable. What's going on beyond? What? I mean, you know, yeah, percentages on small numbers. What do I say, folks, can be deceiving? You're up 16% right now. But all you're, you're back to is 36 bucks. And this thing was trading at 239, what's this number? 197 and pushing 221, let alone the slide really began just over a year ago at about 152. You are up from 20 bucks on the low 
and jumping over, we're talking about a company right now with a market cap of $2.3 billion. Maybe that's a little bit more appropriate than when it was pushing some big numbers at lofty levels for Beyond Meat. Carvana catching a bid, aggressively cutting costs as it prepares for a possible economic downturn. This company, man, CVNA, you talk about a rise and a fall. The market loves that. Ooh, we're seeing, we're seeing some big pops on companies that have gotten punished, man, in a big way. They're going to be cutting costs. There's your acceleration on their numbers, up to 41 bucks. But as we say, percentages on small numbers can be deceiving. You came into the year at about 250. You were at 376 last year. You're up 100% from where we were less than a month ago. You're still sitting at some pretty dicey levels for Carvana. Stay tuned, folks. s and is only down by 25. We'll be right back to finish up the show. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And we got our man Tommy O'Brien the fourth here hanging out for the day. You say hi to everybody, buddy. We're going to be up here. Yeah, you see yourself? Please go. Now, Landon Mason, I'm doing my show, please. My goodness. We got kids everywhere here, folks. Uh, there he is. There's the guy. You see yourself? We're doing a little fun at the end, folks. I know he's got his blankie. 
He's got his pacifier. Huh. You see everybody? You gonna say hi? You gonna say hi to everybody? We got we got one kid running around with COVID in the house. We got another kid here, and we're doing our show, folks. And that's how you make it happen. Huh. And Tommy wants to run around. Tell him. You gonna run around? Oh, what do you got over there? Oh, is that the hat? Is that your hat? Yeah, you got everything, huh? Okay. All right. Well, I just wanted him to say hello. It's been a little while. We're going to get him back on the air. He's turned into a big man, huh, buddy? You tired? You tired? He might be a little tired. He's taking big naps now, folks. Uh, at a year and a half about, they, they transitioned to from two naps to one nap. He did that about a couple months ago. So he takes one big, long nap for about two hours in the middle of the day. you got to love it, folks. Little kids, they keep you uh, alive. They keep you fresh. They put everything in perspective, man. you got to love it. Huh. You say hi? Mm-hmm. You tell him Basil's up next. He wants, to, he wants to jump on the keyboard. Tell him Basil's up next. Say check out Basil's webinar on the front page of TFNN.com. You can sign up during the break, and you'll attend his five-hour webinar taking place next Wednesday. Right? We'll have to get some music going someday, folks, because he loves to dance. He loves the music. Can we growl? Can we growl? Growl. Yeah. He's just scared. Because the big tigers are just get sick. Wow. Wow. Where's the tiger? Where's the tiger? The lion? What? What?